Hi and welcome to another math lesson on analytical geometry and we're looking at quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral is a four-sided, that's quad, um, is f stands for four, and lateral is sides, okay, quadrilateral, so four sides, and uh, so quadrilateral are four-sided uh, uh, figures and uh, we're going to look at three types power I don't know spell it but I think it's like that okay parallelogram might be double L double L okay parallelograms okay now what a parallelogram is it's it tells you okay parallel and um, they are objects or quadrilaterals where the opposite sides are parallel to each other okay like that these two are parallel and those two are parallel and we we get a whole lot of parallelograms and I'll look at all of them in just a minute but we get parallelograms then we get trapeziums now these are all special quadrilaterals obviously any four-sided thing would be um, a quadra uh, it would be a yeah quadrilateral but these are special quadrilaterals a trapezium the general trapezium is simply an object or a quadrilateral where only two of the sides are parallel to one another the other two so in other words a parallelogram is a type of trapezium but a trapezium where the other two sides are also and then cyclic quadrilaterals cyclic quadrilla they must be an I quadrilateral excellent so cyclic quadrilateral just has one property they are quadrilaterals that fit on a circle so let me draw a circle first whoa that's better so if I any type of four-sided object four-sided um, figure that I can draw where its corners are on the circumference of a circle that would be a cyclic quadrilateral okay and the cyclic referring to on a circle okay now these are the ones that we are going to work with and we're going to look at how can I if I had four points on here any four points on here how can I determine whether it is the one the other and oh sorry I've actually forgot there's another one um, that's all on its own and cyclic quadrilaterals are on their own as well but then we also get kites and a kite is also on its own um, a kite has the following property in that a kite there we go a kite has got the adjacent sides are equal to each other so these two are equal and those two are equal okay so how would I go about to prove that four points is a parallelogram trapezium cyclic quadrilateral or a kite now before I go on to that let's just go and look at some special quadrilaterals uh, parallel uh, parallelograms I mean um, under parallelograms what we can also have are more specific parallelograms for example we get a parallelogram where all four sides are equal so it looks like this so these two adjacent sides are equal in length so not just are look in these the opposite side lengths will be equal as well and um, automatically by the fact that um, that they are perpendicular um, parallel if the adjacent sides then are also if 
the adjacent sides are also equal to each other in other words let's choose a different color to demonstrate that this length is equal to that length is equal to that length is equal to that length then this is called a rhombus I think it's RH a rhombus another one could be when my opposite sides are parallel to each other but my angles between adjacent sides are 90 degrees this one you should know that's a rectangle a rectangle is just a special parallelogram okay and then the last one we have is a special rectangle that is also a rhombus so a rectangle that's also a rhombus in other words all the sides have equal lengths that would be well I'm sure you know a square so a square is again a special parallelogram it's a special rectangle it's a special rhombus okay so how would we go about to prove that four points make a parallelogram well here's one of the features of a parallelogram we've already said that that if we can just show for example that if this is a b c and d so for a parallelogram you could show that the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of DC gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of DC but if you've done so once you've done that you've actually proven that it's a trapezium CD so trapezium is very easy to prove you simply prove that two gradients are uh, two opposite sides have equal gradients and then you've proven that it's a trapezium to show that it's a parallelogram you need to also show that the other two sides are so in other words AD and BC those gradients are the same AD and BC so you could do this that would be the, the normal way of doing it but you know what there's actually a way that's so much easier the th the thing about parallelograms is that if you were to connect diagonals in other words you connect opposite opposite vertices what you will find is that these two opposite vertices when they intersect each other they in this little point here okay that is exactly the middle of these two points and those two points which means that to show that something is a parallelogram and I've got a little bit let's make a bit more space the easiest thing to do is simply to prove that the midpoint between A and C is equal to the midpoint between A and B. If that is the case, if the midpoint um, the midpoint of A and uh, again A, B, C, D we're choosing opposite ends, the midpoint of AC is equal to the midpoint of BD then we've proven that it's a parallelogram it's so much easier because the midpoint formula is so easy to use um, for both of them so if you can do that you've proven that it's a parallelogram so if I need to prove that something is a rhombus or a rectangle or a square I'll start by proving that it's a parallelogram once I've shown that it's a parallelogram if I have to show that it's a rhombus all I need to that then show is if this is a B C D then I just need to show that any two sides any two adjacent sides are equal a B is equal to B C so for example then either show a B is equal to B C if you've shown that obviously you're using now the distance 
the distance formula came to show the two adjacent sides either this one once you've shown it once it's already true for the other sides because you've shown it's a parallelogram it follows from the from uh, the theory of parallelograms that opposite sides are equal so if a b is equal to d c and a b is equal to b c then b c is equal to a d and a d must then be equal to d c it follows from parallelogram uh, uh, properties the next one is if i had to show that it's a rectangle if i have to show that it's a rectangle i just need to show that a b c d that the gradient here i need to show that gradient a b times gradient b c is equal to negative one okay remember if gradients are perpendicular they will multiply and give negative one so if i had to show that great that it's a rectangle i would show that the gradients multiply to negative one now if i need to show that it's a square remember what i said a square is a is a special is a rhombus combined with a rectangle so that would be my purpose uh, to show that something is a square i must show that it's a parallelogram a rhombus and a rectangle so to prove that something is a square i'd end up showing the midpoint in total the, the whole process would be showing that the mid the mid let's call it mpt the midpoint of a b midpoint of ac i'm sorry is equal to the midpoint of bd that would be step one then I'll do in step two, I'll show that AB is equal to BC. That would mean it's a rhombus. And then in my third step, I will show that the gradient of AB is times the gradient of BC is equal to negative one. And again, I am using A, B, and B, C because I'm assuming I have A, B, and C. If I don't have A, B, and C, I can use any other three points for these two steps here but if you if you're proving that the midpoint of these four points are um are e equal then you probably do have all four points anyways so um okay that would be proving parallelograms okay that's great isn't it it's really not difficult